Um, and when we came back here, we used multiple linear regressional analysis to test for correlations. Our correlation, the um, top three R squared value that we found were modeled using a um, using um, the power law model, which is also known as the log log model, and it was also modeled through a log linear. was to determine which way uh, best suited our data. So um, here's a brief explanation on what the log-log and log-linear models are. Both include, both involve trans log-transforming uh, your variables. So in the log-linear model, it assumes that the log-transformed dependent variable uh, depends linearly on your independent variable. As you can see, um, at the top formula that we have on this slide, um, only one side of the equation is log transform, which, is, which stands for the dependent variable. And on the second, uh, the second model that we have, the log-log uh, log model, it assumes that a log transform dependent variable depends linear, linearly on a log transform independent variable. And as you can see in the equation that we have on the slide, um, this time both uh, sides of the function was um, log transforms, which indicates that uh, the log log model involves the log transformation of both dependent and independent variables. So, um, previous, a previous study from uh, the Buffalo Watershed in New York indicates that both methods can be appropriate for modeling environmental data. Um, they analyzed a total of four sites, and two sites were um, better suited or best modeled by the log log model, while their main two sites were best modeled by a log linear model. Um, so the power law distribution is found almost everywhere in nature and has been documented in almost any in almost um, all fields. It's been documented in physiology, ecology, um, economics, social sciences, uh, you name it. And um, so the power law model, it's more appropriate for data, when you have data points that have a large dynamic range. And since our data points had that characteristic, we hypothesized that um, our uh, environmental data would be best modeled by the power law. So moving on to um, our field work methods, we went to Australia and sampled from three different wetlands and three different biofilters. Um, dissolved oxygen was measured using a DO meter, and while turbidity and pH were measured using a hydrometer. So water samples were also collected and filtered to, to determine levels of chlorophyll, theophyton, uh, suspended solids, nutrients, which included nitrate and phosphate, and fecal indicator bacteria, which included enterococcus and E. coli. So now I'll pass it on to Kim to talk about um, the data analysis um, methods that we performed. Um, we used two different programs to do our data analysis. One of them was Virtual Beach, and we used uh, multiple layer regression in, in Virtual Beach to uh, determine these correlations. We also used MATLAB, um, to verify the correlations that we found in Virtual Beach, and we use the Pearson's correlation as well as Bootstrap statistical test. We also rank them according to the corrected APA information uh, criteria, which means that um, the model tries to take the simplest relationship without overfitting. So um, it wants to create the most parsimonious model um, and including only the <coughs> most important parameters. So the model gets penalized for any parameters that don't explain the variance that we observe in our data. We also um, took into account the variable inflation factor, which is used to reduce multicollinearity. So if you have a dependent variable called Y that is dependent on two independent variables, X and Z. If X and Z have a correlation between them, then the model will choose uh, the one that is most linearly correlated to Y and only takes that one into account in the model. In our results, we observed three first relationships that were significant. The first
first one being Enterococcus bacteria with total suspended solids. And in both the log linear and power law model, we see that the correlation coefficient R squared is significant, as denoted by the star next to the number. But in the power law model, we see that there's a slightly better correlation coefficient. The next relationship is between turbidity and chlorophyll. And you see again that the power law model has a better correlation coefficient. And it is actually the only statistically significant result of the two. Our last relationship is between turbidity and theophyton. And you see again that the power law model has a better correlation coefficient. However, neither of these results are statistically significant enough. Um, from our results, we can see that the power law model explained more data variance than the log linear model when we applied it to the environmental water data. Um, so after running the Pearson's correlation along with the 95% confidence bootstrap, we were able to see that two out of the three power law models were significant, and only one out of the three log linear models was significant. Also, it's important to notice that the Enterococcus with the TSS correlation appeared twice for both models. And these last three models showed good correlations, but they were not significant after we bootstrapped them. Uh, next. Conclusions. Um, <laughs> so we can conclude that the uh, power law model is marginally more successful at finding correlations than the log linear model. And therefore, we can't, um, we cannot, uh, uh, we can't reject our hypothesis. And at the end of the study, we can, uh, we can say that we can attribute it to the uh, large amounts of uh, environmentally published scientific papers that correlate enterococcus with cold suspended solids, and. This shows the importance that you must remove the total suspended solids and reduce turbidity in order to uh, have cleaner and better waters. And in the future, we would like to um, study these wetlands during wet weathers because all of our data is from dry weathers. And our theory is if we were to study these uh, wetlands during wet weathers, the uh, waters would become more turbid and thus carry more people in the kidney bacteria. And our last conclusion, as you see me there, um, don't drink the water because then you'll get monsoon's revenge. <laughs> <laughs> and Stan is awesome, and as you can see, everybody always wanted to take a picture of him. <laughs> and we'd like to acknowledge uh, the staff and the uh, students that made this possible along with the universities, and especially the National Science Foundation and Fire. <laughs>